This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha, I'm Glenn Martinez from Olamana Gardens, and we'd like to thank you for uh, tuning in to Think Tech Hawaii. And I've got a wonderful guest today. We got Pam Boyer here with us today from the Farmer's Market, which is one of my favorite hangouts, okay? <laughs> and I used to have a booth at our Farmer's Market out at Holly Eva when she was out there at the Triangle. Great experience in that. And we've done other ones, and it's really been great. And when I was president of the Hawaii Farmers Union, let me tell you, it was a big shot in the arm for our farmers to have an independent uh, farmer's market. Uh, the Farm Bureau has a lot of the markets and that. A lot of them, you have to wait for somebody to, to quit or die to get in. They're hard to get in. Once you've got a booth in a farmer's market, it's tough to break the ice. And Pam came with her partner. They opened up. And how many markets do you have now, Pam? We have four markets right now, huh? and we are working to get on yeah. Schofield. Ah. So we will be serving the military, and we are very excited about that. Oh, that would be good yeah. fun. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. And so where are your markets at now? Uh, we have one in Holly Eva, which is tomorrow at uh, from 2 to 6 in Waimea Valley. We have one in Kaka'ako. No, in Waimea Valley. That's the old Waimea Valley Park? Yes. You know, where you go into the, where they had the buildings and the guest reception yes. center? Yes, and it is one of the most beautiful places on Oahu. Yeah. It's so So spiritual. you don't have to pay to get in the park or you anything, do not. right? You just pull in. Well, you have in. to pay to go to the waterfall, but not but, to come to right. the market. But not to go to the yeah. market, right. Yeah. I've been to that one. That was very cool. And where's the other one? Uh, we have one in Kaka'ako, right Malka of Ross at 333 Ward Avenue on okay. Saturday mornings, 8 to 12, and one at Pearl Ridge Center okay. um, on Saturdays, 8 to 12. We're, we're about in Pearl Ridge Center. It is uh, downtown in front of Zippy's and Sears in the parking lot. Downtown. Well, they call it Uptown and Downtown oh, really? at Pearl Ridge, yeah. Okay. So it's a really big shopping right, center. Right, it's like right. 123 acres or something. Right, right. And um, so we're on Kamehameha Highway in Polymomi. Okay. And it's a great market. So you can see it from the highway? Yes, you can. All right. Yeah. And then we have Kailua Town, which is oh, well, our first, hood. Right back there. Yeah, yeah. My breakfast place. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, Kailua Elementary yeah. School. Yeah. And, and the fun thing about our markets is that we have a cafe in each market, yep. a real tablecloth. Yep. You sit down, listen to yep. live music, yep. and you get to meet your neighbors yep. or bring your company. Who you got playing at the market this week? You know, I think Mason is playing, okay. so it'll be Hawaiian yeah. music. Um, usually yeah. at Kailua, we have Paul yeah. Isaac. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And uh, when we go to the Kailua Marketplace, what I love about it is that you go in, walk around, order your breakfast, go grab a table, and then you walk around and scurry around and pick up your breakfast and crepes and that. So you can have something different every Sunday. And of course, uh, you don't buy your vegetables because you grow them. Right, but right, when you're right. walking around, you can buy your vegetables yes. while you're waiting exactly. for your breakfast. While you're waiting for your breakfast Or drinking to be coffee that's grown in Hawaii. There you go. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> and there's always something going on. Speaking of going on, I hear you got something special this weekend. Yes, we do. We have um, a special event happening at Holly Eva and also at Kailua Town. Mm -hmm. um, Fieldworks is coming in, and they are a research development company, and they are um, doing some experiments and research and development with taking selfies. So if you come and you take so, 10 so, selfies, yeah. you get $20 in market money to come and spend at our markets. Well, so I, that I, I really can start helps doing the that farmers. Now. I can just take my selfie? No, I think they so, have a special thing that you, you have, have to, to do wait. there. Okay. You can come on Sunday. Come though. on Sunday. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So I take my own picture 10 times, and they give me 20 bucks. They do. And I can spend a it market anywhere. money. A market money. Yes. And I can spend it anywhere in the marketplace. For the month of November. For the month of November. Yes. That's pretty good. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I'm that'll excited. Be, that'll it's good for the farmers. It's and good for the farmers. For the, Anything, yeah. it's a shot in the arm. You know? Yes, we need to I support know. our local farmers. Yeah. And talking about local farmers, I noticed that when, when we were there, and I watched other people approach you and asking to have booths and that, yes. and they tell you what they're going to do or what they're going to cook and what they're going to serve, they seem to be quite a surprise that you actually insisted it had to be grown in Hawaii and it had to be really Hawaiian homegrown or Hawaiian yes. made if it was arts and crafts and that. So you really do adhere to that. We, we do. It's yep. important because we want to support the local economy. Uh -huh. So everything is local. If it's grown uh -huh. here, then you're supporting the people yeah. that you buy the fertilizer from or the, yeah. you know, the people that are selling yeah. the tractors here right. to the people that work on the farm. Right. And then they come even right. to the local gas stations right. that they put the gas in to come to the market. And right. then the people get to eat the food that's, that's grown right. here, 
and they get to yep. pay the farmer who gets to pay his bills and then they go home and it's just an incredible That's called an circle. economy, right? Yes, it is. It is, it is wonderful. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because I go to, uh, and when I was on the uh, president of the national of the uh, Hawaii Farmers Union yes. and I would go to the national meetings in that, they were really shocked when they came out here to visit us and they came to our farmers meetings and that one, how much food we served at our potlucks were kind of over the top yes. and that and how many young farmers we have. Now, all over the country, the average age of a farmer is somewhere around 62, 63 years old. I was really heartened to see here, we had our uh, statewide convention here a couple of weeks ago out yeah. in Why Not. how many young farmers have. I go to Maui and young farmers rule. I mean, you go into it and it, it's like anybody over 50 almost feels out of place. You know, which is a real good turnaround. I never feel to have. out of place. Yeah, not me. You know, <laughs> well, because I'm getting younger every day. Yeah, yeah. And that I tell, I'm all homegrown except for my hair. You know, but uh, but we have good fun with. It. But yeah, that's a constant challenge though to get the young farmers. Yeah, there yep. is a movement happening here, which is part of the mm -hmm. Farmers Union movement, mm -hmm. of young yep. farmers between yep. 25 and 45, let's yep. say, yep. that have so much passion. Uh, want to farm, are growing sustainably, mm -hmm. they're trying not right. to use chemicals, and they're growing real food right. for the local economy right. for us to eat. And to me, it's the most exciting time right. to be able to assist some of these mm -hmm. young people um, and help mm -hmm. mentor them on the marketing side and mm -hmm. giving, for us, our farmers markets are distribution centers. Right. So they get a place to be able to distribute their produce, um, right. but also to help them get land. I'm right. working with Scott Enright at the Department right. of Agriculture to get a couple people land in mm -hmm. Waimanalo. Hopefully that comes through. Right. Um, and I know A and B is working with some of the Farmers mm -hmm. Union farmers on Maui. Right. So, you know, plantation era is over. And right. it's time for us to start growing, mm -hmm. you know, small farmers, family farmers, right. growing real food for us to And living consume. on the land. Well, we're working on That's that. Right. Right. <laughs> I know we, Cindy we, Evans tried to pass a bill, you know, yep. for that, but it didn't pass. But maybe it will this year. Yeah. Well, one of the issues that we're coming up with is like DLNR uh, a couple of years ago came up with a new policy that if you lease a ten-acre piece of land, that the leasee could not live on the land himself. Yeah. And that really crunched it. The idea was they were against gentlemen farmers. You know, they didn't want people leasing land, building a million dollar home, and then not actually farming. Yeah. So they wanted it farmed. And it is, it's a problem. And I'm trying to find one of these gentlemen farms. You know, they're, they're, we like to talk about them, but there can't be more than a handful of them you know, around. They're not really a presence. But what happens is when they come into a community and they build some $800,000 house, the property tax for everybody around them goes up. Yeah. And it's an artificial inflation. Okay, so the shame of it is people are renting cheap land, state land or department ag land, and then not actually farming. They just want a I've country a lifestyle, yeah. right? It's yeah. more of a lifestyle thing. And it's, it's, it backfired on us. It backfired us on such a point in down Waiholi Waikani, which is a predominantly Hawaiian community going in there. 30 years ago, there was a big land fight here when a lady named Mrs. Marks wanted to sell out and build townhouses and develop it into a community. And it became a, a war zone down yeah. there. They blockaded, barricaded the cops out, everything else, and they won. The state came in, bought out Mrs. Marsh, and all the locals got to stay. Well, they're all doing really great. And a couple of years ago, the city and county that does the property tax came into the community, went around and that. said, yeah. if you don't have a 4% excise license, i.e., you're not just farming, growing taro, but you have to sell the taro. In other words, farming is a business. Okay, but not, that's ridiculous. We should be able to grow so food they for took our own away consumption. Seventy percent of the people lost their agricultural exemption, which means instead of paying tax on one percent of the land, they had to pay a hundred percent of the tax. So let's say if on the tax on a piece of land is four thousand dollars for an acre, if it's residential, if it's ag land, it's only going to be one percent of that. Okay, if you're actually agging, then the, one of the ways they prove it is that you grow something and you sell it. And we all, we kind of went along with that one, right? I mean, you're supposed to farm, is you're supposed to grow something and sell it to the community, right? Well, it totally backfired on it to the point that I had building inspectors out on my property and they're walking around, I'm doing okay. 
until I go over by the horse stables, and my wife has four horses, and right next to the stables, she has a greenhouse, 20 by 30 feet. And they said, and, and what is this in here? These plants are for sale? I said, oh, no, this is my wife's plants. She's just raised them. I used to have to give her money every week to buy plants. Now she has enough stock to take cuttings and seeding and grow her own. And now she grows her own, and she'll finish landscaping our property. He says, I'll have to write you up for that. And I said, what? What do you mean write it up? Clay, you're says, always getting in trouble. And you go like, what, write me up for what? Well, it turns out when we did this ag dedication stuff a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. it sounded good. So we dedicated the land for 20 years. Everybody that did that did not realize the whole ramification. You have 5,000 square feet is for yourself. And anything that is for yourself, a swimming pool, a garage, park your boat, and everything has to be done in the 5,000 square foot area. Everything outside that must be ag. You cannot have a swing set, a dog kennel, or your own personal horse. And that totally backfired on us. So our government is at odds. You know, so we got a lot of people that want to move out in the country for the country lifestyle. They want to grow their own food. And so that's when I got involved with the Farmers Union. I said the day that a farmer can't go out and farm on his own land, his yeah. own food for his own family, that you can only raise food to sell it. There's something wrong in that diametric. And we are still grappling with that. Wow. So people that do egg land, like on the island of Kauai, they must do $1,000 a month or they're not agging. They not only have to grow the food, you know, they come out and they inspect but your you have to sell food, it. you have to sell it, yeah. you have to be an economy. And that's where the farmer's markets came in because a lot of people are not big enough to sell to the stores. They don't have the moxie to go up and right. deal with the store owner or the food land or the Safeway or Costco. I try to sell to Costco. Costco says, yeah. can you guarantee me 1,000 pounds every week? And, well, I can't guarantee it. I mean, but you know, I mean, boy, you could buy 1,000 a week. I'd certainly gear up for that, right? Oh, that would be fantastic. $5 a pound. Oh, the numbers were going in my head. They said, but if you can't do 1,000 pounds, we're not interested in doing business. So we had to start farming co-ops to get somebody to drive around and buy from all the farmers to bring them to okay. Costco. But what happens is this whole food safety thing has gone crazy. Yeah. So the farmer's market for many of my friends and young farmers is a lifeline to them because they can go to the farmer's market, rent a booth, what is it, 50 bucks, something like that, you know, still? $50, you got a table, put your cigar box money, Write them a receipt, and, and you also are in the business. Benefit and you get your 4% tax yeah. license. I mean, all your people are paying taxes, right? Right. Yeah, so. Yeah. yeah. You know, the benefit of a farmer's market, too, which Luann Casey and Gary Gunderman said they never knew anybody in the community, and then they came to Haleiwa, and now they know everybody in the community. There you go. And You're it's such a great. social event. You know, it gives you time for to meet your okay. community and, and spend time. But I think the new kind of farming that we're going to have to have because of FISMA yep. is this co-op farming, right. where we get, let's hold say, a hundred. Co-op farming? I, well, I don't hold know if it's co-op. Just one but, moment. Yeah. i got to take a little short okay. break, and we'll come back, come back to co-op farming and my favorite tool of the week. So stay with us. We're on Think Tech Hawaii. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. Greetings, it's me, Angus McTech, the longtime host and star of Hibachi Talk. Think Tech is important to our community because we bring all kinds of cool ideas and I bring gadgets to the, to the show. So you gotta watch it for sure. But for the first time, Think Tech Hawaii is participating in an online web-based fundraising campaign to raise $40,000. Give thanks to Think Tech. We'll run only during the month of November and you can help. Please donate what you can that Think Tech in Hawaii can continue to be public awareness and promote civic engagement through free programming like mine, and I'm in charge. I've already made my donation, and it's really hard to get this Scotsman to make a donation, but I already did. Please send in your tax-deductible contribution by going to this website, thinksforthinktech.cosbox.com. Say that three times fast. Closing. On behalf of the community enriched by Think Tech, Hawaii's 30 plus weekly shows, thank you and we're mahalo for watching Think Tech and your gen generosity. Let your wing gang free wherever you be. Aloha! Guitar too. Yeah. Aloha. Welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. And I want to share with you, we got my guest, Pam Boyer, is here today. 
And, uh, but every week we like to share one tool with you. <laughs> and today's tool is a simple one. And that is, I happen to be a captain in the Merchant Marines. And one of the most simple things in every farm worker is we have to have a knife. Oddly enough, every Merchant Marine on every ship in the world, to get on board, you have to have a knife at least three inches long, half of it smooth, half of it serrated to cut the line. On all of our farm workers, when they come, they have to show us their knife in their pocket. That's because we have to cut line and we have to do it. It's one of the most practical tools we carry. The other thing is every merchant marine, every, from ordinary seaman on up, has to have a rag. So when we go walking up the gang plane of a ship, we have to hold up our knife and hold up our rag. And the rag is to wipe up oil spills. And I think how many mothers wish their kids would have a rag in their hip pocket, huh? You spill it, you wipe it up. But those are the two things we do. And on our farm, because of the aquaponics, this is something that we carry around in our hip pockets is a little level. Because in the water thing, water seeks its own level, but we have to get it level. So these are just some of the simple things that we carry every day. And a practical level. But you're getting ready to talk about the co-ops. Yeah, I think the new way of farming on Hawaii mm -hmm. is going to be if we get, let's say, 100 acres, uh -huh. which is small compared to California. Right. I was just in California, and there is so much farming going on. It, I was so envious. With the drought, now it's all over? It's uh, No, I mean, there's just, it's, it's growing, just everything's anywhere. growing yep. everywhere, and the markets are yep. just filled with produce. Santa Barbara Farmers Market, mm -hmm. there weren't even any other vendors except for farmers. There were so really? many farmers, and the produce was magnificent, yeah. and I just bought too, way too much, yeah. <laughs> but not really. Um, yeah. And um, But I think for here, because of the way that we are, if we could get 100 acres, let's say get mm -hmm. 10 farmers right. or five farmers on there, mm -hmm. they share the tractors, somehow they get a food mm -hmm. safety certified right. uh, warehouse to right. house everything and wash it, so everybody shares the cost. That's right. And then I'm not quite sure how that would work as far as the sales sales go, mm -hmm. that still needs to be determined, but at mm -hmm. least the facility of growing and sharing all those yep. costs would be right. better. Now I went out to Laie in the Mormon church out there, they have about 600 acres which they co-op, oh. and the members of their church can go out and they can get an eighth of an acre, quarter acre, half acre, up to an acre, in other words, use it or lose it, if they to don't grow use for it, to grow for themselves. Sadly, they made the decision they cannot sell anything. Wow. They can only grow for themselves or they can donate give it, it give it away, but they can't sell it. And so it, it, it somewhat stifles the, the entrepreneurship of it, but they didn't want people going commercials. And I really wish they would readdress that and allow people to make some money off of their farming because it costs you something to grow it. Yes, it does. You know, and doing it. And so, and well, in Hawaii, it costs a lot. A lot, <laughs> right? And so we, I've seen different plans come up with say having 50 acres and making it into quarter acre plots. And you give a person a quarter acre if they use it and they're productive with it, you give them another quarter acre and another quarter yeah. acre and another quarter acre. And every few years, somebody comes up with a plan to have a big circle and have all the houses going around, have the shared utilities and that, right. and and doing it. We've worked with um, the farmers returning from war, from you know, Iraq and Afghanistan, to come home to have a place to land and be mission orientated. Are you working you know? on your farm with that? Still, still working with oh, that's that. That's great. Yeah, yeah. So we do one or two people a year. You know, it's not always smooth because I'm people sure come back isn't. with some problems. Yes. Okay. But, but once you know, they because latch you're on, a Vietnam I'm vet. a Vietnam vet, <laughs> and they came back with problems, and nobody had a program for us. They just. They could send you to college, and that was it. If you weren't college orientated, you were just on your own. Can you imagine what the World War One and World War Two vets came back with? There they was no, nothing That's to work right. with. Now we have so much available. Exactly. With PTSD. So Nobody programs. even knew what P. There was no name That's PTSD right. at that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, farming is a great rehabilitation. Yeah. What was that? Yeah. Yes, please. We're going to pull up your website now oh, great. in here for you, great. and you're going to be able to see that. And highly encourage and everybody to go to And this is Annie Sweet, my business partner, um, mm -hmm. did this website, and she did an incredible job on it. Mm -hmm. She's an amazing woman. Yeah. So we have the four markets, and we do sell just local produce there. That is all that is available. We, mm -hmm. we go through our markets and look at everything that's being grown to make sure we're, mm -hmm. we are police women, men, Mm -hmm. beings mm -hmm. <laughs> in our markets. Right. 
And this is all Annie's photography. She's yeah. a really great photographer. But we have plants, we have fruits, we have vegetables, we have yeah. value added, nuts, coffee, all yeah, sorts you of things. Value added. What value, is value added, added is uh, a locally grown product yep. that you do something to. So um, if it's a if macadamia you, nut, you roast it. If it's right. coffee, it's roasted. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be a breadfruit that they make hummus out of. Yeah. So they make different things. Right. They take it one step further one in the step processing. Further. Right, right. Yeah. And so we found out with our fish, if just just scaling it and cleaning it added value to the fish. Wow. Just that. Just just taking that drudgery out and yes. doing it and doing it up, right? Uh, if you cook it, then it's a meal. That's way value added. You know, so yeah, some yeah, people so make dips up. out of it, smoked uh, tuna yep. ahi dips yep. and things like that. I've seen. Yeah, I love Maui lavender. I I think there's got to be the most value added product in Hawaii. I see yes. Maui lavender soap, Maui lavender butter. Maui, and, they and they have actually, really taken it. The yeah, branding, but they don't the branding of it. The yeah. branding of it, yeah, yeah. But they hand it to other people, so yep. other people do those products under mm -hmm. their label, which is smart. right. Yep, yep. You know, we're so small compared to big ag on yep. the mainland. We're just tiny, right, tiny, right, tiny, and we have to keep that into perspective, right. you know, in, in all, all the ways that we're doing this. And that's something I got out of the, you know, with the Farmers Union. When I went and sat on the National Council, and you mm -hmm. sit in a room of 30, 40 people that, that are have thousands and thousands that, of acres. And the average person had ten to 70,000 acres yeah. and only four employees. Everything wow. was contracted out. When they come to Hawaii, or I remember Dean Nakamoto got up one time at the legislature and he held up a piece of paper and it said 82% of the farms in Hawaii are less than four acres. Yes. Okay. Okay. Less than 2% are more than 100 acres. So what you got is a couple of big ones. And the rest of us, we're all doing on four to ten acres. Yes. Yeah, okay. And, you know, in farmer's markets, when we came here, it, they are very regulated in California, right. Texas, mm -hmm. and I'm sure other states. But here, there's no regulations. Really? So what's happened is there are a couple big farmers, mm -hmm. and all the other farmers buy some of those products mm -hmm. because they grow squash, which other people can't grow, zucchini. Mm -hmm. Um, they're growing tomatoes, which are very difficult mm -hmm. to grow. And there are right. certain products that show up, pineapple, right, right. that show up in the market right, right. That, that the farmers aren't actually growing. Right. In California, right. you cannot do that. But right. the way that it was set up, yeah, you have to grow what you're selling at the market. And mm -hmm. they fine you if you do not do that. I was just at if a conference in Stockton. From outside. Yeah, I was just at a conference in Stockton, yeah. and they spent a whole day on how they regulate that and how really? they catch people that are reselling. And here, everybody resells. And yeah. it's, I don't know whether it's good like or go bad. You mean like go to Costco, buy a case of something, well, and come out and Well, hopefully they don't it? do that, but they buy from Larry Jeffs or they buy from a Loon Farm, uh -huh. and then, or Dole, and then mm -hmm. bring that product to the market. And then sell it as if and it was so, local. Yes. Yeah. Well, it is local. It is local. It is local, but, but they but didn't actually grow it themselves. themselves. So most of the immigrant farmers are growing. So they're more of a merchant than a farmer. They are. Right. But in our markets, they have to be a grower uh -huh. in order to be in there. And then right. they can subsidize with other foods that are grown mm -hmm. here. Right. And that's just the way it was set up. And, you know, KCC is 12 years old. And our oldest market was Haliva. It started in 2009. Wow. Um, but on the mainland, markets are 35 years old. So Very we really are, yeah, yeah, we really are babies now, with so this. Do all of your markets, do the people only grow in Oahu, or can they co grow on the big island and bring it up? Or Maui Any and bring it island up? Hawaii in up. Hawaii is so great. So it's Hawaiian grown. Yeah, not so necessarily, it doesn't have to be restricted to Oahu. No, it does right. not. And so, and there are different yeah. climates on the other yeah. places. So we've been getting great corn yeah. from Big Island. We get uh, persimmons from yeah. Maui. We're going to get cherimoyas. I'm hoping yeah. when I go back this yeah. this Saturday, there are cherimoyas there yeah. from Big Island. So, yes. Yeah. By the way, we, we didn't know it at the time, but when you invited us to go out to Haleiwa and we participated in your market out there, we drove out every Sunday and that, and we did worms. And you'd hear Natalie, it's all about the worms, yes. organic worms. And people came, we sold the worm bins, we sold the wor live worm you know, stuff, and we sold the worm castings, right? And then about a year later, we went and looked at going to some other farmer's markets, and they wouldn't let our worms in because they weren't food. They said, oh, no, we couldn't have worms in a, in a marketplace. And there was just a complete shutdown. So you were our only avenue to the public to sell our worms out in a public venue which is kind of odd. And we thought the other farmer's markets would welcome us, and they did not. Yeah. 
You know, it's kind of I, funny. They they only wanted food, you know, ready to eat right. kind of thing. And mm -hmm. and part of our business is we're we're small business incubators. Mm -hmm. And there's so many young people that come with an right. idea right. that has something that's grown here, value right. added, and this is such a great yeah. way to get in and test your product right. and give them give them the experience. Right. And Annie and I, if they're open to it, help them with their marketing and how to sell the product right. better. Never, we don't really tell them what to do with the product, right. but you know, yeah. to help them be able to sell their product. Right. Um, and it's so rewarding to yeah. see some of these young kids like really being successful and making yeah. a living and seeing the whole world is wide open Fantastic. if you just are creative. Well, we have about 30 seconds left. That's it. Let me, that's it. It goes by so fast. Always with you, Glenn. I'd like to do one more time here about what you got coming this weekend and which farmer's market. Okay, so we at, if you come to Hollywood tomorrow, which is from 2 to 6 in Waimea Valley, and Kailua Town on Sunday from um, 8.30 to 12. Okay. Uh, field field um, day is coming, and um, they will be handing out, if you do a selfie, uh, $20 worth of market money, which mm -hmm. will be good all the way through uh, November, and you will be able to come and support our farmers. And Fantastic. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Well, we thank you all so much for tuning in to Think Tech Hawaii. I, I always love to have a lovely guest like this. Thank and it's you. so good to be promoting our farmer's markets. Uh, I love them. I go to them. I eat there. That's We take our whole crew out and buy them dinner. We enjoy thank it you. very much. <laughs> yeah, Thank you all so much for joining us.